Today we've got a full in-depth review of the brand new Garmer 400 265 and the 265S. I've been putting the 400 265 through its paces over the last little while, swim, bike, run, and all the goodness in between. And as I've been testing the larger edition, my wife has been testing the smaller edition 400 265S and doing it side by side with her existing Phoenix 7S, which I guess is more like wrist by wrist, not side by side, but you get the point. In fact, that's probably an entire video for down the road, but more on that a little bit later. Now you might just think the 400 265 is simply an AMOLED display, a prettier display version of the 400 255. And at first glance, you would be right, but that would be missing one of the biggest changes on the unit, which is a whole bunch of new training related metrics that weren't there previously on the 400 255 and aren't going to the 255 either. First up in this video, I'm gonna dive into all the newness compared to the existing 400 255 series. And then from there, I'm gonna dive into what hasn't changed. That's almost just as useful in some cases. And after that, I'm gonna walk through step-by-step -step, sort of like using the watch on a daily basis from both the non-training pieces as well as the training pieces. Finally, we'll dive into the accuracy of both the GPS and the heart rate, as well as the battery life and how that's actually playing out before wrapping it up with some recommendations. With that, let's dive into 10 things that are new on the 400 265. And the very first one is that AMOLED display. Now, an AMOLED display is simply a much more brilliant looking display. Much higher colors, much higher resolution, just looks a heck of a lot prettier. You can see it side by side here with the existing 400 255, and it makes that thing look like the 1980s, even though it's only like, you know, nine months old or something like that. Still, it's a huge step up on the display and part of that is the increased resolution. I've thrown the numbers up on there on the screen right now so you can see what those look like. Keep in mind that pixel math means that you multiply those numbers so uh, you know just simply doubling the actual numbers you see on the screen there is really like a 4x of the total pixels that you have available to you. Next, while Garmin has kept the two sizes, they slightly tweaked the smaller size. Uh, it went from being a 41 millimeter case to a 42 millimeter case. The existing larger size though remains the same at a 46 millimeter case. The watch thickness has decreased by a half a millimeter, a very, very small amount, but it technically did decrease. The display sizes remain the same as before, uh, which is 1.1 inch for the 42 millimeter and 1.3 inch for the 46 millimeter. Uh, for context, that's still slightly smaller than the 965 and my other wrist here, which is 1.4 four inch for the 965. However, the second biggest change to this unit, aside from all the fancy display stuff, is the addition of training readiness. Uh, training readiness is something that Garmin added to their higher end watches last year, starting with the 400 955 and then the Phoenix 7 and Epic series. But this is the first time we're seeing it on the 400 2X series, if you will. Uh, and so it is exclusive to the 265. It will not be coming via software update to the 255, whereas a bunch of the other software features I'm about to talk about are coming to the 255. Uh, but essentially training readiness is an umbrella that looks at your sleep, it looks at your HRV status, it looks at your stress, looks at your training load, and figures out whether or not you should train that day or how hard you should train that day. Uh, essentially, it's as the name applies, are you ready to train or training readiness? And now I'm gonna dive through all of that in much more detail in just a second. Let's just finish up all the newness. Uh, the next piece is that all editions of the 400 265 have music. In the past, you bought the 400 255 or the 400 255 music edition or the small or the small music edition. All of them do have music now built onto it so you can do offline storage of Spotify or Amazon Music or MP3s or Deezer uh, and play it back using Bluetooth headphones. Now, the next new feature the 265 gets is wrist-based running dynamics. Uh, now, in the past few months, the 255 got wrist-based running power, and that's still here as well, but running dynamics is things like ground contact time and vertical oscillation, stuff that in the past used to require a Garmin chest strap or RD pod. Now it's built into the watch itself and no extra accessories are required. You can still use those if you want to, but you don't need them anymore. Next, the 265 is fully compatible with what Garmin calls Unified Training Status, or basically Physio TrueUp 2.0. That's the feature in Garmin Land that allows you to take different Garmin devices and sync them all together into one like semi-cohesive picture. In the past, it was more semi, and now it's more cohesive. Uh, and I'm probably gonna do a whole separate video on that because there's a ton of nuance and changes there uh, that have started to kind of come together over the last few months, and now it's all largely here today, and it works pretty darn well. And it makes it so you can mix and match Garmin devices and have that stuff updated virtually instantly and consistently across the board. The next change beyond that is the addition of a USB-C charging cable in the box, which I know sounds sort of silly, but hey, in the past, Garmin has only sent out USB-A or the regular uh, charging cables. Uh, it's still the same Garmin connector as it has been in the past, but now it's a USB-C cable instead of that. Uh, and of course, finally, across the board, you're gonna see just a dramatically different user interface on the 265 than the 255 using the AMOLED display. Again, more colors, more brilliance. It is a full touchscreen display, so you can swipe through things using your finger 
or using the buttons. Garmin allows you to do either or. You don't have to use any touch if you don't want to, and you can use exclusively buttons, or you can use almost exclusively touch if you want, and buttons just simply for starting, stopping, and hitting laps. Now lastly, we've got the price. So for context, the existing 4Runner 255 base unit uh, without music was $349, uh, and the music edition was $399. This new AMOLED version, which includes uh, music across all editions, for either the 265 or the 265 small, or S, is $449. So 50 bucks more than the existing music edition, but now with an AMOLED display and with training readiness. Keeping in mind, though, that the 400 955, the non-AMOLED one, uh, is just 50 bucks more than that, and that has full mapping on it at 499. So it's something to kind of think about right there. Speaking of things to think about, if you are finding this video interesting or useful or something like that, if you could just whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe, it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Now let's just quickly run through what has not changed since the 255. Basically baselining things very, very quickly before I kind of walk through some of the menus. Uh, the first thing is it still has full multi-sport support. So full triathlon support, swim, bike, run, all doing it as a triathlon itself. Still has full power meter support. So if you're out there cycling with a power meter, you can do that. Has still full multi-band GPS, dual frequency GPS. One of the cheapest watches out there uh, that has full multi-band GPS support. Uh, means way higher GPS accuracy. It has course support, but not mapping. So there's no maps on the 265. There is in the 965, but not the 265. Uh, but you can load a course and follow a bit of like a breadcrumb trail if you want to. As with all Garmin watches that has activity tracking, you know, step tracking and sleep tracking, as well as a gazillion other metrics like breathing rate and uh, pulse ox or SpO2 tracking, uh, none of that's really changed. Uh, the same goes for structured workout support. You can pull in structured workouts either from Garmin Connect or from third-party apps like Training Peaks or any other platform you want to. All that's the same as before. Meanwhile, inversely, it does not have ECG support. Despite Garmin introducing that on the like-priced uh, Venue 2 Plus just you know a couple weeks ago, that is not here, nor is there LTE or voice or microphone or wireless charging. None of that stuff is there. The, the main hardware change here really is that display and that's about it from a hardware standpoint. So talking about the AMOLED display for a second here, the core difference between an AMOLED display watch and a so-called MIPS-based display watch is an AMOLED display watch by default will usually turn off the display when you put your wrist down like this. But then as I raise my wrist up, the display turns back on again. However, in the 265, you can also do what's called always on mode. In that mode, you roughly half your battery life, uh, but it means the display is always on. Uh, but when you raise your wrist, it goes to full brightness and you put it down, it dims down a little bit, but it's still actually on. So the MIPS-based display, like on a 400 255, it's on all the time uh, because the battery power isn't that significant. In terms of visibility, I've had no problems viewing it. Uh, I am here in Florida right now, and I'm out in the sun. It's hot as balls out right now. In the sun, in the workouts, I've had no issues seeing the display at all, just like I haven't had any issues with the Garmin Epic series uh, over the past year or so. So in terms of daily usage, the very first thing you're going to notice when you wake up in the morning is the morning report. This was added with the 400 255, and it shows you basically what's going on that day. Uh, and one kind of really cool tidbit here is that it'll pull the weather data for your local area for that very first page and have that first page match your current weather outside. And I had a really great example of this a couple days ago when it was super foggy early one morning and the fog on the display matched the same looking fog outside here in the trees. Like you can see on this little video snippet wherever I got right there, uh, it's kind of just a really nice touch. Uh, anyways, once you go down from there, you'll see basically kind of like your summary of last night as well as what's planned for the day ahead. So you've got things like your training status, your HRV status, your training readiness, any structured workouts you may have had in your calendar, uh, your calendar at large. You can customize what you show or don't show there, and you can turn this off entirely if you want to. It has become one of the most favorite features on Garmin devices over the last, you know, nine months or so since it was released, uh, and it has become one of my favorites as well. Just as a really quick glance at last night's sleep, as well as, you know, kind of the day up ahead. Now, as you clear out of that morning report, you'll be brought to your watch face. The watch face is fully customizable. Both the items that are on there, as well as the styles. There's a whole bunch of stock styles you can choose from. You can also go to Garmin's Connect IQ app store and download a gazillion other watch faces for free. You can make your own watch face with your own face on there if you want to, like own photos and stuff. Do whatever you want there. Now, if you tap down from there, you'll see the widget glances. Widget glances are basically little tidbits of information from different categories like steps or calories or training status. And then each one of those you can open up into and see more detailed information, usually over different time periods, like today, the last seven days, and so on. Uh, and it's all kind of a quick way to glance at different information without getting too lost in the watch menus. One of those pieces of information is the new training readiness, or at least new to the 400 2X series. 
In the past, as I said earlier, this is reserved for the higher end watches. Now it's on the 265. And essentially training readiness is this umbrella of whether or not you should train that day, like I said earlier. And it's heavily weighted on kind of two factors. Uh, the first one is sleep. Did you get good sleep last night, good quality sleep? Uh, and then two, what's your training load look like over the last few days? Uh, now, that doesn't mean if just one of those things is off that the whole day is out the window. It's then gonna look at the other components like your HRV status and your stress and your sleep over the last seven days compared to your normal baseline, et cetera, and then ultimately give you a score at that moment in time. Uh, now, if you're doing hard training every day, then more than likely that score will be lower. And that score will shift throughout the day. Uh, so in the morning, for example, it'll be lower, but if you sit the rest of the day and do nothing, it'll be higher by the end of the day because you're, again, relaxing. And it's, you know, figuring that out in real time throughout the day. Inversely, if you start off the day rather high uh, and go out and do a couple hour workout and come back, the score is gonna be lower because you're now less ready to train since you just did a hard workout. Uh, and all of this makes sense. Like it's all fairly easy to follow along and it's worked fairly well for me over the last nine months on other devices, as well as working the exact same here on the 265. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, the existing 255 will get a bunch of software updates, but training readiness is not one of those updates. Garmin has moved the line in the sand, what used to be, you know, a lot higher, now to roughly, I guess, 449, uh, which is the price point of the 265. I'm sure in due time, it'll move it down again to the next set of watches, but right now, Garmin is saying they don't have any current plans to introduce training readiness to the existing 255 series. Next, let's dive into the sports menu. This is where you choose the sport you're gonna go and do your workout in, whether it be indoors or outdoors. There's a whole slate of sports you can choose from. Here's a list on the screen right now of everything on the unit today. Typically, Garmin adds new sports over time, so expect that maybe a year from now, there'll be more new sports than there was, you know, when I shot this video. So just kind of keep that in mind. You can customize the data fields on any one of these sports as you see fit, uh, both the actual data pages, the data fields, the settings for all of them. Each one of those, again, can be customized using your phone or on the watch uh, using, you know, your fingers and whatever else the case is. Uh, from there, you go ahead and hit the start button. Once you hit the start button, you'll start running or rotting or whatever it is you're doing, uh, and it'll show you the data from there. You can see a couple photos or videos, whatever got on the screen right now, of me doing that. And none of this has changed from any past Garmin device. Uh, it's doing this in real time. If you do have your phone with you, you can do live track. Uh, for example, this morning, my wife had her phone with her. It did live track automatically uh, back to me so I can see where she was in real time. It again, does require your phone, but it is kind of a handy feature there to be able to figure out where someone is in the middle of their workout or even their race. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there is no mapping on the 265 series at all, but there is course support. So you can load a course on there. and It'll give you effectively churn by churn instructions telling you uh, what churns coming up, et cetera, and a bit of a breadcrumb trail, just like many Garmin watches have over the years. It's not amazing, but it does work. And I've used breadcrumb trails for many years to get, you know, through all sorts of complex uh, hikes and things like that. And the same is true here as well. You can certainly use that. But again, if mapping is really important to you, just spend the 50 bucks more and get the 955 in the, you know, non AMOLED display version, uh, because that does have the full map set there. Now, once you've completed your workout, you see all those stats on the watch. Uh, you can scroll through them. This is really where that AMOLED display like shines. It just looks so much better than the existing 255 does. Uh, kind of a night and day sort of difference. And at the same time, all those stats are available on Garmin Connect Mobile or Garmin Connect uh, using your phone or desktop, whatever you want to use there uh, to go ahead and see this. You can see a bunch of screenshots right now uh, from Garmin Connect Mobile on a couple of recent workouts from the 265. And likewise, this will all sync off to Strava or Training Peaks or any third party apps you might use. Now, before we talk about the battery and kind of some recommendations, this is a great time to talk about the GPS accuracy and the heart rate accuracy. So let's jump over the computer for that. So taking a look here at this first steady state run, you can see it's identical to the chest strap. Both the 265 and the 965 are basically spot on here, no complaints. I go into this tempo run, again, the same thing. It's a spot on uh, with the chest strap, no problems there, either on the heavy side or on the recovery side. Then here we got this hard VO2 max interval uh, session on the smart trainer. Again, really spot on, even across the top of those higher demand areas. Then we've got this outdoor ride here, a couple hour outdoor ride, a few very minor bobbles on the 265 for just a couple seconds here and there, a uh, few beats higher, lower than it should be, but again, really pretty good for a road cycling ride. Uh, now here is an interval work I did running, and you can see the 965 actually has some problems on the others, but the 265 pretty much nails it. You could quibble a little bit here and there on a couple of the intervals where maybe a few seconds delay, but that's kind of the norm for optical heart rate sensors. But overall, it's actually relatively impressive showing of both the 400s and the 200 sprints towards the end there. 
Then diving into the jungle to look at some of the GPS side of things. Now uh, this is one of the runs I did the jungle in the fog and you can see the units are very very close between the Apple Watch Ultra, the 955, 965, 265, all of them are virtually identical. A couple meters apart but pretty good. The same is true here on this sidewalk kind of a suburbia land but just look at that they're actually on the sidewalk properly not just all over the place. Uh, and the same was true if I looked at kind of a zoomed out view and then looking at the road cycling side of things. This is one that should be easy on a relatively straight road but it's fun to zoom all the way in and see that it gets the correct direction of travel on both sides going north versus going south. The watches are spot on on the correct side of a very small road. This is not a big road at all it's just a really small beach side road. Even going around this turn around at the end there those cars are at the end gave away kind of the width a little bit and sort of helped to show just how impressive the tracks are in terms of tightness around this corner. Then I was curious to see whether or not the wrist-based running dynamics were similar to the chest-based ones. And here you can see they largely are, except in those couple recovery areas when I walked, that's where I see they differ. Each one of those like spikes that you see in these different charts are that moment I walked uh, between some intervals. And otherwise they're relatively similar. I'm still not sure what to do with all this data. Uh, Garmin all those years later doesn't like clarify what to use running dynamics for, but they seem like for most of these metrics, it's probably close enough and similar enough uh, if you want to use that data. So what about battery life? Uh, well, here's the official charts right now on the screen for the two different units. I've been mostly focused on the 265, the larger edition from like a battery life perspective, just something I can kind of control myself and all the variables. Uh, in that case, I'm seeing roughly an always on configuration. So I'm gonna burn more battery there. Roughly again, half of what you should see for the non always on or the gesture based. Uh, I'm seeing about 1% per hour battery burn. So you're looking at about four days. That's pretty much in line with my friend and fellow reviewer Desfit seeing about four and a half days. Uh, and that's inclusive of GPS activities every day. In my case, I'm using auto select or sat IQ, which means it'll automatically use multi-band when it needs it. And you know, sometimes harder conditions like here in the jungle and sometimes more open conditions, uh, but that's again with always on configuration. If you turn that off, you're basically doubling your battery life. Either way, that is far beyond what you'll see from any other company with an AMOLED display in this realm uh, for a sports watch or even a non-sports watch for that matter. So whatever Magic Garmin does uh, with their battery life uh, balances there is pretty solid here as well. Okay, so rounding out things here, you might be thinking it seems a little bit early to have a brand new edition of the 402X series, less than nine months after they released the first one. And in some ways that's true. The 255 came out last June and here we are now with a brand new 265. But essentially Garmin's offering you almost the same watch at two different price points. And it kind of makes sense. A lot of people have asked for an AMOLED display version of the 255 and Garmin gives you that. They're also just giving you training readiness as well. So that's definitely a bit of a bonus if you wanted that feature as well as the AMOLED display. Beyond that, this is a relatively low risk watch just like the 965 is for Garmin. They're not adding all these other new features like ECG or wireless charge or voice calling or LTE, or whatever the case may be. Uh, they're just keeping with what's already tried and true and making an AMOLED display, just like they're doing today with the 965 as well. And you can't really fault that strategy. Speaking of strategies, if you are looking at the 265 series, I will have a full uh, beginner's guide, user interface guide, complete guide, whatever the heck you want to call it, uh, posted shortly up in the corner there. Typically about 25 to like 40 or so minutes where I walk through every single feature step by step, showing real world data and how you actually use this, a bunch of pro tips and stuff like that. So check out that up in the corner or stay tuned for it. Hit subscribe in case it's not there quite yet. With that, have a good one and thanks for watching.